Drama Podcast. Is this the end of our civilization? Prepare for gaming domination. The mightiest monster of them all. Grimlock the Dino 9, Gamezilla. Welcome to the GameZilla Podcast, your last line of defense in major gaming news. I'm your host, Grimlock, and with me in the GameZilla Media Studios, my co-host, my producer, the Deadite Knight. Oh, that's wrong. The Deadite Knight isn't here. I'm the Macho Mandalorian, and you know that this is the way. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, this is the way. And of course, <laughs> and of course, our uh, our lovely video producer behind the scenes, the man, the myth, the legend, Player One Mickey. I'm just here to make the magic happen. And uh, welcome, welcome to the Games Old Podcast, episode 289. And it's brought to you by our patrons. Yes, our supporters, patreoncom slash Media. I want you to go there right now and look at all the wonderful things that you could have access to if you just simply send a little bit of money to us every single month. And hey, it starts as low as just $1 a month for some special perks. But really, really, you become the cream of the crop when you start donating $5 a month to GameZilla Media. That gives you access to exclusive podcasts that you can't get anywhere else. They're not available on Spotify, Mixer, uh, TuneIn iTunes, doesn't matter where you go, they're only available. Patreon.com slash Games of the Media. And there's at least one show every single month from your favorite Games of the Media podcast, uh, including Noobs and Dragons, The Legend of Retro, Last Action Podcast, Noiseland Arcade, and of course, the Games of the Podcast. And guess what? Our big Patreon show this week is, because Games of we try to do one for you every single week, the must or bust. We're going to tell you what new games are worth buying in December, as well as we go over some of the free uh, Games with Gold and PlayStation Plus games that's available for you at patreon.com slash games of the media. Go there and please start your patronage today. All right, we are running way behind, so we want to get right into it. Get it ready. We're going right into the news. Get it ready. Get it sweaty. It's time for the news. I'm searching the web for the latest gaming news. Searching GameZillaMedia.com. Downloading headlines. What about this monster story of yours? Download completely. Topic number one. The PS5 dev kit and potentially what we're looking at a DualShock 5 controller live in the real world thanks to a leak thanks to an irresponsible employee thanks to someone who's probably doesn't have a job anymore i don't know but here we are um i leave confidential stuff around this studio all the time i've never been fired yeah well it's different we have no no policies here no guidelines no expectations that's why i still work we're all trash anyways after an illustrated image of the playstation 5 dev kit appeared to be confirmed by a game developer last august a new image this time is the real thing Uh, it has appeared on Twitter and the image first shared by Twitter user alcoholic (laughs) (laughs) alcohol I cost and reported on by Eurogamer shows two supposed PS5 I just realized what that person's Twitter name is. That's terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we're going to keep going. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Supposed <laughs> PS5 dev kits side by side, each featuring the same V-shaped design we saw in the earlier in, uh, illustrated images. Sexy. I like it. It's sleek. It looks aerodynamic. You are all the V shape. So, Listen, no ducks. No, we are ducks, not going down. Mighty this ducks fly in a V. Road. They fly in a V. Hell no! It is an efficient way to travel it's through the air. It's trash. It looks stupid. You look stupid, and you for even jumping on this bandwagon. I'm pointing over to the video guy over here. He doesn't have a camera. This guy's a dick. Ducks fly together. You're a dick. Ducks. He's a dick. Fly together. This is, shit's ugly. Okay. It's a dev kit, so let's not get too excited. But what the fuck is this thing? Look at it, okay? And if you're listening to it on iTunes or Spotify, look it up. What is this? That's the pizza one. Why? Oh, yeah, there you go. You, you lay a slice of pizza in it. See? It actually might be a giant pair of snowshoes where your feet foots in, fits in that, crev- that V-shaped crevice. I have never seen anything that I wanted to just chuck against a wall more than this dev system. I'm sorry. The PS5 dev system looks like a, one of those training potties for a child. Like, 
okay, toddler Timmy, you need to take a big dump. Here's this nice little groove. You just hover your ass right over this thing and let it rip. Man, it's a little harsh. No, it's real. That's what this. That's where they got the design from. You're, okay? you're already hurting Nikki, my feelings for in advance when I buy one of these. You come over to my house, and I know you just want to take a big dump on my PlayStation Five. First of all, if this thing, <laughs> if if the if the actual system looks anything like this, which it won't. Okay, I'm not saying it will, but if it did, you're that's exactly what I would do. I'd come over to your house and just dump all over it if you had one. I'd find a child named Timmy and say it's time to learn how to you know it's time it's time to learn how to potty in a big boy a big boy toilet. If I can help, we're gonna start with this piece of shit right here. If I can help a young Timmy grow and develop into a functional child, and if it involves defecating on my six hundred dollar PlayStation, then I guess <laughs> I've helped the world a little bit. First of all. <laughs> But, <laughs> Mickey, you can't be searching this stuff on the show. I'm laughing about this little girl smiling next to her toilet. <laughs> Mickey, go back. Go down. Go oh, down. Come on. Get that one. Get that one of that girl <laughs> grinning next to a toilet. Go up. Go up. Up, 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 up. Right there. Right there. You can why? What kind of tra- what kind of ad is this? Is this girl smiling next to a toilet? Okay, listen. <laughs> We're gonna keep focusing. They glow in the dark targets for your toilet. Yeah, I'd, I'd put those in my toilet it's now. It's called the toddler target potty training. It looks cooler than the PS5 dev kit. <laughs> Same function. <laughs> Same function. Man. All right, listen. It's a dev kit, people. Okay, so I, I I pray that everything on the production side looks completely different. I still want to know why it needs to look like this, like a dev kit could just be a box it literally could be a computer case for god's sakes why does it look like the like the mighty ducks have just taken form and they're flying down in a v you know like it, it, why and why, and why does it have vents on the side of it it looks like this thing needs to fucking turbocharge <laughs> dude that, that thing <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like someone explained to me how much airflow this thing needs. Well, Grim, I'm going to actually teach you something about nature. You know, uh, when uh, when a machine is truly a beast, truly uh, far beyond <laughs> the, the control of man, like the great white shark, it needs giant gills on the side to breathe. The PlayStation 5 is the great white shark's. It is a, it is an apex predator of the video gaming world, so it needs more airflow because it's doing more work, and it's gonna it's gonna tear stuff up. That's why. Look at them as great white gills. This thing screams the power of the depths of the ocean, and all you see is uh is garbage <laughs> because uh you you don't have an you don't have an eye for for monstrosities like I do. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It's one of the best examples you've ever given in the show. Like, it's it's half decent. It's one of the best and it's, one of the worst. It's half decent, <laughs> but at the same time, for you to compare your favorite animal with this yeah. giant turd, I feel bad for you that you had that you had to pull out all the stops. Uh, you I know, feel bad that you actually had to take something you actually care about <laughs> and tie it to this giant heap of turd right here you know, that is the PS5 dev kit. I will gladly defend the PlayStation 5 dev kit because if now that you're fully admitting to being an Xbox boy, I need to defend my brand. I need to be the PlayStation guy on the show. And even if that means being a fanboy and following it to a watery grave where it devours me. First of all, there's no could, safety cage for you me. Could be a fake, you can be a fake PS boy all you want. We have a real PS boy on the show. It's, his name's Player One Miggy. I he bought to know. an Xbox. He did buy an Xbox, but he is, he is a Death Stranding player. Okay, There's only one place you can play that. Is that true? It wasn't on. It's not on Xbox. I, I guess I just never cared to pay attention. It's true. Nah, it's only on P. Only on PlayStation. Exclusive. Comes on the PC. Uh, so, what do you think of this dev kit? Well, I think it's. <laughs> I want <laughs> honesty. Honesty. I can't look at direct. I can't look directly at the picture because I feel my eyes melting. But it, it's, <laughs> it's horrible. It's built. This is built for functionality, not fashion. So I mean, I, we were talking oh about it gosh. before, uh, be, before the show. But uh, I'm wondering how hot does this thing run for it to need that that, that much ventilation? It is true. Which then, okay. So on a real note, it does make me concerned that their dev kit needs to be have that much airflow. That why why what in this box is running so damn hot that you have to have this weird well like the, the devs have to be able to push it extremely hard so it has to have more ventilation than something that's uh you know actual street product 
Mm. Things we would actually be able to purchase. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Extra airflow in that bad boy. I don't know. This this instantly concerns me about the the actual product having temperature issues. If they're going to try to make it look acceptable for the consumer, and then all of a sudden we have a bunch of overheating issues on the on the uh, PS5. It is it is in my mind now. I am a little bit worried. But why does this thing look like it came from Gibraltar Trade Center flea market? Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> That's my real question yeah. I need to know. Gibraltar Trade Center, if you're not familiar, was a flea market here in Michigan that, that, we, that we would go to, an indoor flea market. And, like, that's where you could go, like, get that knockoff that was, like, 451 games in one box. And the box looked like it was a Cheerios box that they just, like, stuffed some components inside, wrapped it with duct tape, threw a controller in there, and gave it to you. That's what this reminds me of. It's like that... It's that knockoff cheapo plastic just what what is it why why does it look like that and then we probably should just move on to the other piece that is sitting here and that's the controller do you have anything left to say about this dev kit i could only be so fortunate to own one i would own one just because of how stupid it looks like like this is something that needs to be in the museum because like what why I, I'm ex- I'm excited. I'm not a game developer. I don't know. I'm excited as time goes on. Like as time goes on, and they actually are allowed to start talking about this stuff for them to explain what the hell is going on there and why it looks like that. Because because you can imagine that a developer is going to come along at some point once it's all said and done and come out and say, yeah, it looks like that. You know, here's here's the thought process behind it. Blah blah blah. And then we'll all be back, sit back, and like, oh, that kind of makes sense. But right now, it's just dumb. Considering like the like, there's a great picture of, of dev kits right there. The GameCube just is a, literally it's a PC tower with with GameCube ports on the front of it. Like that's what they are. They're not these insane things that look like ugly spaceships that are about to take off. Anyways, the next piece of this story. Is that we- I like that all the ugly, like there were all these leaked images and we're like, oh, that looks stupid. That looks really ugly. And then that was actually what the dev kit looked yeah, like. Yeah, it was spot on. I like that. So it's true the whole time. <laughs> so the next piece of, of this whole thing is if you look right, uh, if you're watching the show live on Mixer slash GameZone Media, Mixer.com slash GameZone Media, there's a controller sitting on top of this dev kit and right next to it. And it looks to be a slightly altered DualShock. So we're now possibly looking at the DualShock 5. The first thing I would like to mention is the giant fucking touchpad on in the middle of the controller. Why is it still there? Backwards compatibility. Sh- no, we don't get to throw <laughs> things at me. I'm not jazzy. You can't treat me like this. Give I'm not giving the mouse pad back. Right, I'm going to throw the mouse at you then. You get your choice. It's a Corsair. It's cheap. It won't hurt. <laughs> Sir, it's a couple of property that will come out of your check. <laughs> I can't. I, I wanted to believe that the, that the touchpad was not going to be there. And once again, this is a dev kit, so maybe the controller will be slightly different. But if there was going to be a screen in the middle of it or something like that, I believe it would be there with the dev kit because you would need these these companies to be able to actually develop for it. But maybe, maybe, maybe we could cross our fingers and hope. But it looks like there's a giant touchpad in the middle of this controller still, which. In all, in my opinion, Sony gave up on using uh, the first year into the PS4. So here we get, go yet again, still having it. And you got anything on this? Because that that's the thing that upsets me the most. Well, you know, it's tough. One clearly, Sony is a brilliant company, and they're thinking ahead of their time. And now devs <laughs> have finally caught up to the wonder that is the the touchpad. And uh, we're going to see some really innovative innovative and groundbreaking things here in the, the next generation uh, using the touchpad. I imagine that the next Killzone game will only use the touchpad. What? That's not what I think. <laughs> You just you just are just sitting here enjoying the fact that you're just dumping complete nonsense out right now. First of all. The touchpad's are dumb. It's going to be dumb. It's awkward on the controller. It's not it's not a streamlined system whatsoever to be used for anything. You know, period. Well, here's the problem. I would much rather have a bracket that's built into this controller 
that I could just snap my phone to and I have a have a screen that shows me like I don't know a map. Like <laughs> I don't even give a shit what it shows me. Just not just not another touchpad that does absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna give Sony some, some advice because there's still time to make changes. Um, maybe they should actually learn from the Vita, and if they're not going to give us like triggers or panels on the bottom, go ahead and throw the touchpad over on the bottom side of the controller just to give us more buttons. Yeah, I mean, a clickable touchpad on the bottom plus sensors, it'd be at least better than where it's placed on the top even, of the controller. Even yeah, even if you put it on the bottom and you may, and maybe even made it a rocker, you know, like in in the middle, so that it was actually two buttons and that it was easily you didn't accidentally trigger both of them, you know, type deal. Yeah. I I don't know. I just for me like the touchpad on the back of the Vita made more sense than this touchpad ever has on the front of the DualShock Four, and now the what looks to be the DualShock Five. It's just it, it's just such a such a, a a a joke and so spidey 2kx is chiming in here on mixer and he says it was supposed to be a touchscreen um and and that was the rumor right is that we were going to replace this with an actual screen but if we're looking at a dev kit right now and it's a touch monitor how is a dev how is a developer supposed to be using that kit to actually test out the screen on this controller unless they get three con- you know there's two controllers there and those are different and like you, you can have both and now you're going to be able to buy a screen one and and a, and a, a non-screen one. I don't know, but bottom line is, it looked it, from what we're seeing right now, and that's what we're basing this off of the images that leaked on Twitter that have now that have been confirmed by multiple people as being the you know an, a legit dev system. Those controllers look a little bit thicker. The handles look a little bit thicker. They do look a little bit different than DualShock 4, so it is a different controller to an extent. And here we are looking at, at this, this thing that could be a, a DualShock 5 with a giant touchpad in the middle again. Again, that we don't use for anything. It's literally a button. It's the, it's the biggest button that has ever been installed on a controller. That's true. That's the only, <laughs> like, that's all it is. How do I pull my menu up? Oh, you slap your palm in the <laughs> middle of the controller and it'll work. Trust you just me. kind of feel around you for a while. You can't miss it. What do you, what do you got to say? Anything? Anything else? You know, like, like I've said from the beginning, it's just for backwards compatibility. We're, we're not actually going to see any new ideas brought forward. It's just. It's just so you don't run into weird backwards compatibility problems. Because remember how irritated I was with the fact that the PlayStation TV plays like 10% of Vita games? You don't want to run into that with backwards compatibility (laughs) to the PS4. I asked you this question just a few weeks ago to name five games that you were worried about wouldn't be playable without it. And you could give me like three. Maybe three. Yeah, but... There's probably some butthurt nerd in their basement that's just raging because they love the touchpad. There's I tried no. to represent that person and I There's failed to do so. <laughs> uh, the speaker has been the speaker has supposedly been kept in it as well, and they've supposedly um, added some sort of um, rumor was the, some sort of microphone. Piece. Oh, great! Because that works good on every other system. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So now you're going to talk to your controller. So now when you're playing Death Stranding 2, Miggy, not only is the baby going to cry to you and you're going to be able to hear it out of your controller, but you'll be able to make baby noises back to it to calm it down. Be like, beep, 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 it's it. okay. You won't have to just shake it. You'll rub the touchpad first, like your pat. No, you'll pat it like you're patting the back of the baby because that's super cool and then you'll rock it and then you'll talk goo goo gaga to it hey, hey, just think about <laughs> don't ever do that again maybe. just that's think creepy. about what the touch that's just creepy looking at a grown man and the baby sounds coming from him <laughs> it's weird just think about what the touch screen in a integration might be on that new terminator game you have to listen to the patreon pre-show to know what, <laughs> what i'm talking about plug. what a <laughs> shitty plug <laughs> What are you talking about? That was a great A plug. That was a tease. That's going to make people drop their, their hard-earned money to listen to that Those Patreon Those are the people that drop their hard-earned money and go, wow, I'm taking my money back. No way. No way. You just, I'm just saying that there could be endless possibilities with the touchpad and the new Terminator game towards the end game, if you know what I'm saying. 
You'll know when you get there. Street Elf X chiming in on Mixer says, I think Sony is leaning towards the Xbox controller, making it a thicker controller, uh, and almost positive that it will come out to look like the Xbox controller. I think I think you're right. The controller is a little, it does seem a little bit bigger, and we've seen that from the DualShock 3 to the DualShock 4. Uh, it actually grew in size, and this looks like to be, once again, increasing slightly. Um, you're still going to have the parallel joystick so you're not going to have all, like sony will not release a dual shot a first party dual shot controller that um you know offset joysticks there's no way it's not going to happen the, the the world would melt down sony fans would would just riot if all of a sudden you had offset joysticks i like the symmetry yeah i know you do you know it's okay it's okay to like it okay i'm not saying i can use either controller i just prefer the offset sticks I don't know why. I actually don't really. I, it just feels more right to me. But anyways, I think I'm done. I think I'm done ranting about this. But seriously, this is a huge letdown to me. And and I don't. I don't think I expected a huge change out of anybody. I expected the DualShock Five to be the most different because we have already got confirmation that like the Elite Series Two Xbox controller is going to work with the Scarlet. You can't, at that point, in my mind, you can't change the controller of your next-gen console too much if you're claiming that the previous-gen controllers are going to be compatible with it. Like, yeah, they could be a little bit different, but I don't think you're going to see a, a, a huge change. The DualShock 4, though, was that, was that controller that I thought, when they moved to the DualShock 5 and the rumors about the screen, and I go, you know what? Honestly, that little pad there, it can still be touch-sensitive at that point. But for the people that could give two shits about it being a touch-sensitive pad, it being a screen to just give you certain information takes me back to that Dreamcast days when, like, mm. I found, even though it was gimmicky, I found it fun. Like, it was cool. To me, it was neat. Back then, I played NFL 2K because that was actually a good football game. But back then... You could look at your controller and actually on a tiny dinky screen, I don't know how I did it, but now that I think about it, I would pick my play so that Deadite couldn't see it on the screen, and that was cool to me. And in a couch co-op form, of course. Yeah. But I think it's still neat that you could see things like that. You could see health bars, you could have like mini maps, you could do stuff like that that I think uh, could be cool. How it would be kind of neat, and, and then this, this gets real gimmicky, but I think of like an Ubisoft company or something that would do this. You have a Ghost Recon game with drones and stuff. You throw your drone out, the drone screen, uh, the view of the drone from the camera is on your controller. You know, like that would be cool. Things like that that could be fun. And that third parties could support and first parties could really show off and, and use the technology on a, on a higher level. Yeah, but I can tell you the reason why there is not a video screen on the controller for the DualShock 5. Um, because it's probably as the same battery as the DualShock 4, don't say that. which only don't, lasts about an hour and a half. Don't say Think that. There would be Why? no battery life if you put a screen on that controller. Why would you say that? Why because would you curse yourself like that? I am still outraged that the battery life on the DualShock 4 it is so offensively be. bad. It has to be better. So throw a screen on that bad boy, and you're going to get seven minutes of gameplay before you have to plug it in. No, I believe you'll have to have a little hamster on a wheel running connected to your controller to power it. <laughs> they obviously didn't get rid of the touchpad, which is a big disappointment. They, they, but at the, but I have to believe the one thing they learned is that this controller has to have a better battery in it for the love of God. So I, I don't know. I think, um, I think you're wrong on that one. I think it's going to be, they're going to fix that. You're talking about the PS4, which was the one control, like the PS3 was fine. The controller, as far as battery life. Yeah. So, like, we're talking, like, they've only done it one time. Like, I, I feel like enough people have complained about that that hopefully they they adjusted it. It's probably why it's a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger, looks a lot like the DualShock 4, but for some reason it's larger. It's so they could shove a bigger battery in this thing. Yeah, they had to take the battery out of Because they didn't change the... anything else. Well, because the, the PS4 controller is currently powered off a battery, like all the old used batteries from the LG Envy or whatever. <laughs> like, you open it up, it's like one of those stupid <laughs> was, little cell phone it, cell it's batteries. It's terrible, yeah. you're right. <sighs> okay. 
Um, let it, here's the thing. We want to know what you think of this dev kit of the uh, of these rumored DualShock Five controllers. Uh, let us know in the PlayStation channel on Mix or on Mix. Yeah, on Mixer, of course, live, but Here. in the Discord. In the Discord, join the Discord today. Talk with gamers from around the world for free. It's the Games Little Media Discord, and I think uh, Miggy here. <laughs> look at that. It's already in the chat. That's a and hot And if you're plug. not in the chat, if you're not in the stream every Monday night. Here live on Mixer, mixer.com slash gameslow media. Then you just go straight to uh, gameslowmedia.com. Right on that homepage, you're going to see a community tab. Click it, and you'll see the button to join right there. We're going to move on. We're going to talk about uh, the next big news, and that is uh, Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, standing up and um, taking a very strong stance on virtual reality. So here we go. We know that Microsoft has been very flip-flop when it comes to VR. You know, they, they weren't into VR. Uh, they were working on the HoloLens, which was more of an AR situation. And um, the Xbox didn't support it like the PlayStation did or like PC has. And then the Project Scorpio got announced. And Project Scorpio, this was really interesting. I read this today, and I totally forgot about it. Like, Microsoft did such a good job of just kind of like, Let's stop talking about this and people will forget that we ever said anything. Do you remember when the Project Scorpio got announced that it's the strongest console ever made? It's going to be amazing, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be able to even support VR like PCs do. They, that's how they were like pr plugging this thing back when it was still just this like unknown project, mm -hmm. this unknown update, updated console. And then Project Scorpio got turned into Xbox One X. And all of a sudden, all that talk about the VR and how it's going to be powerful enough to support it was gone. And it, I had forgotten, but sure enough, I read this article. I went back to the initial Project Scorpio announcement, and it's there. It's there clear as day where they're like, yeah, it's going to, it, it could do it. It can do it. That's not a lie. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it just doesn't. <laughs> so anyways, this article is, uh, goes on because uh, earlier this week, Phil Spencer said in an interview uh, that nobody, nobody's asking for VR on Microsoft consoles and has followed up on Twitter by saying that even after playing the highly anticipated yet unreleased VR title Half-Life Alec, is that it? Did I get it, Miggy? Alex. Alex, whatever. That was close. Uh, he is still not convinced. And the quote goes on, it's just not our focus with Scarlet. Referring to the Project Scarlet codename for the company's 2020 uh, system, however, he admitted that Valve's upcoming game was amazing when he got to play it. Uh, in the original interview, Spencer raised issues with the current state of VR. It's isolating, he said, adding that priority with Xbox was on responding to what our customers are asking for. He added, thanks to the availability through other means, nobody was asking for virtual reality on Xbox systems. So... The um, the issue thing or the the tweet that he put in here is that fair. Um, it, he put he put out that tweet that we just read, and then he actually got some he got some kickback right um, uh, from including Sony's uh, Yoshida. So Yoshida San actually responded basically saying like, "Hey, oftentimes um, works hard to make things that no customers are asking for." Was kind of Yoshida's stab back at like like thanks for saying that Sony works on things that no one are asking for, right? And so the, uh, the response was, I don't think the issue is Xbox focusing on building up their games, their game li games lineup. It was the way VR was dismissed as a novelty not worth pursuing when it's clear that there, are, there is a huge AAA investment by Valve, Sony, and Oculus. In my opinion, just say it's not our focus now, but we are leaving the door open. And so this this came this was an interesting like re or uh, response to Phil because when you read Phil he says he does say not for Xbox not for Microsoft our fans are not asking for it like that is the phrasing that he used so for this person to say that Phil responds with fair feedback I've said publicly I love how our industry has pioneered AI physics, 3D, RT, VR, AR, etc. For us, it's about focus on our innovations right now. I've played some great VR games. I've got to play the new Half-Life. 
uh, in the summer. It was amazing. It's just not our focus with Scarlet. And so I find it, first of all, I find it interesting because I feel like Phil is very transparent and, and these, 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 uh, platforms that he stands on when like this, I believe, I believe him when he says the analytics, the response of our customers is that no one's really asking for this on our platform. And I believe him. Like, <laughs> there's not many people in this industry that I can stare at and say, this guy's probably telling the truth. He's historically been a straight shooter. Yeah. And so, and when, and the more I think about it, I go, would I want a VR headset on the Xbox? No. Because I have had a VR experience on the PS4. And though it was fun, it's not something that drives me to, to do. And the concept of how it literally closes you off when all we're trying to do is open up the world of gaming and accessibility and, and, and allow everyone to play everywhere with everyone, VR is a very closed off, isolated situation. And I've played VR in a team, in a team option with uh, things like rigs that I found cool, but I'm still sitting in a room closed off where I can't even see what's around me. Someone could literally have a baseball bat and ready to just smoke me in the face, and I wouldn't know. Like it, and so with that comment, you're right. And so I don't know. I I look at it. I go. I've tried PC VR. I've tried PlayStation VR. I own PlayStation VR, and for the second time. For the second time. And though I have had fun moments with it, I have I have enjoyed it to an extent. I don't think it is a, I think Phil is right in the sense that it is not, it shouldn't be a focus. It shouldn't be a focus of the Scarlet. It shouldn't be a focus as to why I'm going to buy a system. Because it's, because even though some people are coming out here saying that there's AAA support from Oculus, Valve, uh, Sony, there's nothing there that goes, I'm going to buy a system, a complete system, because of VR. VR is a second thought. It's a second tier item. For some people, it's beyond second tier. I'd, I'd argue for Deadeye, it's third, fourth, fifth tier. There's things before it that you would care more about than VR. But it's, it's, it's easily, at best, a second tier to whatever else you're going to play. You're going to want to play the exclusives. You're going to want the, you know, the ray tracing and the special SSD. You know, there are other functions, other perks, other things going on that you care more about than you ever will when it comes to the VR. And the only way you're going to change my mind on that is the next generation of VR. This generation of VR is done. It's peaked. We've seen it. It's cool. Beat Saber is fun. It's about the only VR game I actually care about. And... You know, beyond that, nothing is going to change my mind this gen. What are you going to do with PSVR 2.0? What are you going to do with the new Valve, the new Oculus, whatever whatever system? And how are you going to prove to me that AAA developers actually care about VR, that they're going to do things like Valve's doing right now? Valve makes their own headset, for God's sakes. So, yes, they're going to take the Half-Life franchise, and they're going to push the shit out of VR because they own both products. Mm -hmm. What is going to make, I don't know, Naughty Dog say our next game is VR? They're not going to do it. There's no way Sony would even let them, and they own VR, uh, a VR system in PSVR. So, like, that's what I want to see. What are you going to tell me that this technology is so good and, and it is truly the next thing in, in gaming technology that the next God of War, the next big game is, is going VR and you expect that the world's not going to light on fire about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the thing is, is if you're, if you're Xbox and you look at your main rival, Sony, and look at the yawn of success that they've had it hasn't been some sort of breakout success for the playstation brand why would you chase that why would right. you invest in trying to it's, it's a niche market it's a small sliver of the gaming space why would you try to compete with sony for such a small piece of the pie let them have that small piece of the pie and focus your resources and efforts on 
developing your next system of gaming, your streaming platform, de- uh, you X know, Cloud. giving money to your de- supporting your developers to make more games to sell your systems that way. Work on your accessibility, you know, platform that that Microsoft is very passionate about. And and with that being said, Microsoft also sells Windows. Like so, there, yeah, the Xbox brand, the Xbox home video game consoles platform is not interested in VR. That doesn't mean that there aren't Microsoft products that support VR. It's right. just the Xbox brand isn't interested in playing in that space right. because it's too niche. Yeah, it's we're just not there, and I don't know if we will be there anytime soon. Where that piece of the pie is worth trying to chase and pursue. Sony's already claimed out there we are the VR people for home consoles, and it's just such a small percentage of the market. Doesn't make sense. We have seen such a success with Pokemon Go, the Harry Potter game, whatever whatever augmented reality game you want to talk about. AR is far more interesting in what it can do within real world and video game, or or re- let's just say real world and virtual world. Yeah. And and the and the in, involving both together, right? So when you think of things like Hololens that Microsoft is working on, and we hear about some of these projects, like like for example, you and I work in the automotive industry, we hear about how people are wearing these devices on on a um, you know an a a line that is teaching and showing them the st- the steps on how to how to properly do their job more or make them more efficient or something yeah. like that. We've se- we've seen examples of doctors using it and being able to see skeletal, you know, actual skeletal scans of the of the patient that they're staring at while they're staring at them so they can actually sit there and line up, you know, a broken bone and reset something or whatever, install a plate more accurately, do things differently. You know, we're not even talking video games at that point. We've, you know, we've started to see what Minecraft Earth could be, right? Like in, in, in an app form on a phone. And we've seen it on HoloLens where all of a sudden I'm not a Minecraft fan, but if I could sit there and mess around with building, building stuff within the real world, I'm, I would, I'm way more interested in giving that a try than just blocking myself off and playing a video game, first of all, in a blinding format where it's like ugly as hell and, and, and headache inducing. And then sitting here. You still hang out with me and I'm all of the above. Right. I don't know why I still do it. I just hate myself and like to, like to deal with it, I guess. But I'm the VR of people. It's why I'm I very niche. It's why I can't also do VR. Now you're enough already. <laughs> but seriously. I, I've done VR. I've forced myself to play games like, like Robinson's The Journey, which I really, really wanted to like. It was such a cool concept, and I, and I wanted to play through it, and it made me so sick that I, like, would, I would fight my way through sickness to try to play this game. That is not the experience that you want out of your, at the time, a $400 headset that was just as expensive as, your, as the PS4 itself. So to me... You know the what it, what Microsoft has in the ability of AR com, compared to to VR. There's more potential there, and so they're going to invest in that technology. They've already been investing in that technology. If you if you get a chance to try uh, Hololens, I highly recommend it. It's a it's really cool. It's it's a really unique uh, device, but. And they're on Hololens too. They've already they've already uh, uh, evolved it e- even more before it's even really commercially like available. Yeah. Like yes, companies are using it, but we don't see. You're not walking into a store and buying a Hololens. They're sitting here refining the hell out of this thing before they worry about it. And so I don't know VR at this point. It, it, I agree with Phil a ton. I think the I think the uh, the the lash the lash out back towards him is is. You know, I don't think it's warranted, but but I think he's responded fairly, and and Phil's always handled himself well. I'm I'm on board. I I don't have this next generation. I'm more worried about ray tracing, loading times. Um, you know, just that next evolution of graphics, and and honestly, just good games. Just give me fun games to play. I'm excited for stuff, and this isn't necessarily next gen, but I'm excited for Cyberpunk. I'm excited for these games. That's what I care about. If they're in VR or not, it doesn't. Actually, I should say this: if they're not in VR, I'm probably happier because I know they're going to look better. I honestly just want the simplest way to sit down and play the game I want to play. Is that booting it up in front of my TV with my controller in my hand? Yes. 
But is it also maybe just powering on my phone and making sure I'm on Wi-Fi and then all of a sudden there's my game? Yes. That's what I want Microsoft spending their time on is making sure that I can just simply play games. I don't want to wear some stupid headset. I don't want to have to clear my furniture out of my way for moving around. I just want to play some video games and it'd be an easy thing to do. Yeah. So and I'm and I think yeah, you just made another good point is that VR right now is is it's not easy to just jump right into it. And and there are options out there. Things like the the Oculus um Quest. Yeah. Is a, is a really cool device that you're right, doesn't have as much setup, but it's still a setup. It still requires I can't I just right now I go upstairs, I sit down in my gaming chair, I grab my controller, I hit one button and I go. Yeah. It's 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 interesting because I guess I have to t- take the gamer standpoint of I purchased a soundbar over the weekend, and I you know I care a ton about the way things sound. That's why I'm the audio producer for a podcast. Like I I'm into it, and my wife couldn't care less. The deal I had to make her is she presses the power button on the TV remote, the soundbar comes on. She presses the volume button on the TV remote, and the soundbar volume goes up. She wanted it to not change at all the way she experiences the TV. And my problem is, is I'm sort of the same way with the video with playing video games. I don't want extra steps. I don't want extra complication in between me and playing the game. Just like she didn't want extra complication in between her and and watching uh, Disney Plus. Now for me. You know, if it was audio, yeah, I would have taken the extra steps and used the extra controllers to get the experience I want. So I get that some people don't care because it's the same situation. But for me, I want I want the method my wife wants for audio. I want it as easy as possible, and I just want to enjoy it. Yeah. No, I agree. Again, hop in the Discord. Let's talk in the Xbox channel about what Phil had to say, what we think about Xbox not really caring too much about VR. Is this is this a deal breaker for you? Is it something that you agree with? What uh, you know, what is the uh, what is your feelings on this topic? But we're gonna move into our last topic. I think I'm gonna let uh, Deadite lead this one because he had this was one he suggested, and he has a uh, you know an. an specific angle he wants to take on it. So here we go. Topic number three. All right. So uh, we found an article on Polygon that was actually a really interesting write-up of some of the changes that are coming to YouTube. We know there's a lot of changes broad spanning across YouTube of the way they're monitoring content, um, not just video game related, but on across the board because it has been a recent, recent issue that's come up a lot in the public eye of how easy it is for children to access things that they probably shouldn't be accessing on YouTube because, honestly, YouTube came about and uh, became prevalent long after you and I were children. And these kids are now growing up with YouTube, and they're seeing things that they shouldn't see where... Back in the day, it would have been a little bit harder for kids to stumble across some of the stuff that's available to them now. So interestingly enough, YouTube has come out and they have made a statement that they are changing how they moderate violent video game content. Um, YouTube will no longer restrict violent video game content starting today. Uh, That was an announcement made by a Google support post. Um, That means uh, that all future gaming uploads uh, that include or have scripted simulated violence uh, may be approved instead of being um, age restricted as they might have been before. And it's really interesting because I, I think the Grim talked about I had an angle I want to take with this. The representative of Google came out and said that it is Google's opinion that there is uh, a, that they know the difference between real world violence and scripted or simulated violence, such as in movies, TV shows and video games. And they want to make sure that they're enforcing real violence, you know, making sure that that is not on their platform and that is restricted. Now, Grim and I were talking like, is this something we want to cover today? Is this something we want to talk about here on this podcast? And I said, yeah, because what it is to me is it's YouTube and Google. Importantly, we got to remember one of the biggest companies in the world, Google, taking the stance that is counteractive to what we're hearing uh, activists talk about, what we're talking about certain politicians talking about. Everyone for the last 20 years has tried to blame violence on video games. I mean, ever you, since you, Columbine, right? You don't have to go back much, you know, very far to for the president of the United States to blame to sit here and use this comparison. Correct. So yeah, you're you're 100 on pace with with or correct with this 
confusion that they're that they're kind of yeah creating yeah and even in the yeah the early 90s when the when the rating the video games ratings became a thing after some crime so which you, ratings are bullshit by the way <laughs> absolutely but youtube is coming out saying that hey we understand the difference between real violence and video game violence so youtube is taking the stance <laughs> that they are not the same thing they're not equivocal and that equivalent i should say they're not equivalent so to me this is this is actually really big that we're having uh, a major company in some ways support video games as an art form opposed to overly restricting and regulating them i think first of all we've picked the topics we picked today have been where i've been very animated and like upset and, and this one this one bothers me too because though i don't agree with with a lot of the politicians that want to sit there and like restrict video games, we have sat back and talked about how as, as gamers, as human beings, as whatever, however you want to look at the spectrum here, we have to do better and just letting and, and YouTube and Google just sitting there saying, okay, we're just lifting this or we're letting it go almost seems kind of irresponsible in the sense that, do you real do you truly believe that people understand the difference? Do you truly believe that there are not people out there that will watch something and then go and re and and recreate it? Because that happens. Or at least we're told it happens because those people say, "Oh, I did this because I watched this movie." Yeah. "Oh, I did this because I saw it on a TV show." I, you know, "Oh, I did this cuz some guy was in Japan and on YouTube and I watched it and I thought it was funny, so I tried to recreate it and then someone shot me because they thought I was attacked." Like it happens copycats happen things happen so i'm sorry but like when you're creating a video game where there's a level that you literally walk through an airport with a machine gun and you just mow people down is that really okay to just say yeah no age restriction because it's a video game mm -hmm. i don't know why do video games have i know we just ripped on them but why do video games have ratings why do movies have ratings why do tv shows have ratings why is everything at least set up where if i'm a parent and i hand my kid an, an ipad i can control what they can literally open and on that ipad i can literally control on netflix what they are able to see and stream because i'm controlling content now Parents are going to go, oh, well, my kids are like video games and there's no age restriction on video games anymore. So, so how do I stop my kids from necessarily watching Call of Duty streams? Our friend Invalid, that is video content he would not want his kid to watch. Are his kids no longer allowed to watch YouTube? Yeah. You know, like you have to look at it that way that you're, you're tearing down a wall. For what reason? Why? Why, why did you do this? It's it's an it's interesting because it is a major company, so you know that there are monetary factors involved, um, or they you know I don't know if it was it was too hard to regulate, so they just gave up. But I would imagine that it's restrict you know they want, maybe maybe uh, sadistically Google wants kids to be able to watch this to get view numbers up. I don't know. It, uh, I know. I still think it's interesting that they're making. At the end of the day, they're making the claim that I think, as adults, we agree with. I don't agree with the kids should, you know, kids being able to view this violent content. So I don't know. I, I guess I'm a little bit conflicted on it because I'm not yet a parent, and I know that there are a lot of parents that maybe too loosely let their children watch whatever they want on YouTube. And if it does make it harder for parents to control and regulate, I don't know. I guess that's unfortunate, but I still I still agree with the fact that they made the statement that the that they're not comparable, but that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be regulated. I mean, we we're literally on a platform right now in Mixer that we put a 18 plus stream tag on our on our stream, knowing that we say things and do things sometimes that are not appropriate for teen or below. I mean, games those for the children, but you know, and we joke about that. But at the same time, our show we put on here and 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 the and our personalities that we show off here when we go to a public event at certain locations with certain companies we we definitely act differently because we don't want we don't want this to be our presentation there at that at that event you know when we go to Af wait you were telling me i was supposed to behave well when i went to the children's hospital yes 
Well, they told me not to come back. So. Yeah. I was wondering why they also <laughs> won't return my phone calls, but now I know. No, I'm just kidding. I was on pretty good behavior. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, when you can look at anything and, and, and realize that there is buffers, there are filters, there are these things in place for a reason. And though we like to be free and honest and, and express ourselves certain ways, we even us we even filter ourselves in certain situations because we know it's not acceptable and so for youtube to just come out and say oh yeah well it's a video game <laughs> free world okay cool and and mind you they do say if this video is nothing but blood and gore like someone just took someone took the worst of the worst of of gears of war and made a highlight reel of it it could still get flagged they did say that in the article yeah. but at the same time it's gray. It's a gray area now because you don't know. So for content creators that are Call of Duty people and things like that, that, that have been getting age restricted on every video, sure they're excited because their viewership should should spike. Those are the people that should be expi- excited. No one else, I think, cares because bottom line is if you're someone that if there's age restricted content and you're someone that couldn't get into it, guess what? If you were smart enough, you'd fig- you figure it out, right? I guess you'd that's true. I mean... <laughs> Are you 18? <laughs> yes. yes. You know, <laughs> all my parents locked me out. Okay, I'm a smart enough kid at this point to go figure out how to make my own YouTube account. Yeah. Like, that. that's the thing. In this day and age, like, you're not, like... You're right. Is it at that point where YouTube's like, this is just not a fight that we can win? We're just going to give up? Because that's kind of how it feels. Mm-hmm. Why? Again, because I come back to that question of Why? Why did this happen now when so many other things that are going on in YouTube right now with Copa and all that stuff is is just like YouTube's on fire right now. YouTube, YouTube, as far as content creators, they, they got content creators running scared, for God's sakes, as far as I don't know what to do. I'm going to take all my videos and make a private right now because I'm literally going to get everything's going to get flagged. And then you come out and you're like, OK, uh, oh, yeah, vi- violence within video games. We don't care anymore. It's just wide open. It's it's it is strange uh, time to make that change. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm uh, I'm not a fan of this decision as much as like I don't like restricting gaming. Like I've I've taken that side. This is weird. This just seems weird to me. And I feel like what's going to happen here in like the next couple weeks, maybe a month, something like we're going to get more information of it. And this 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 concept that people that some people are excited about right now is going to flip because like. We we still don't understand why this is happening. And so what's what other piece of information are we going to get in the next couple weeks or something that goes, oh, typical YouTube, this is bullshit. That's that's where I'm kinda kinda at right now at this point. And I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. Won't somebody please think of the children? You know, I could I could come up with one scenario for you. Okay, let's hear it. Call of Duty. Okay, I've heard of it. We'll go back to it. Um, so we have uh, Infinity War or, who, or whoever's making the current game. You have um, the, one of the, you know the most the, the most successful Call of Duty in sales to ever, and it's getting flagged, and ad revenue is being affected, which which at that point should is affecting the content creators, which causes them to stream other games. Yeah. Because they can't get what they normally, you know, they they can do better with, say, a Fortnite or something like that. And so because of it, is Infinity Ward, is Activision Activision affected by this? And because of it, Yahoo, not Yahoo, sorry, YouTube (laughs) and Google, (laughs) Yahoo, we've all got, rest in peace, Um, YouTube and Google... Are making moves like this so that that content can be more ad revenue supported. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's it, they're a big company, so at the end of the day, it's all about money. So that 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 has to be a factor. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, what I got, man. That's yeah, it. that that's, was our attack yeah, on the that's news. A solid news, solid news this week. So that uh, that's our attack on the news for these topics and much more. Please visit gameslowmedia.com where we have our blogs, our YouTube channel. <laughs> Let me just shit all over um, <laughs> <laughs> all of our streamers, uh, all of our other content sitting on our website. You can see all the other podcasts and everything at gameslowmedia.com. We're gonna roll right into it. It is time for our Zilla update. 
That's right. Update. Ah, Zilla update. So, folks, I got to do a lot of gaming over the weekend and over the holiday weekend. I had an extended weekend thanks to uh, Thanksgiving, right? And I hope everybody uh, that celebrated it got to have a, a good time. If you had an extended vacation, good for you. If you had to work the whole thing because you live in Canada and your name's Frustrated Canadian, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. They had they had their Thanksgiving earlier. They still no, got a Thanksgiving. I know, I know, I know. I'm just I'm just giving them a hard time. I saw them in there, and I saw them on in the mixer chat up there. So, but uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about something really cool, and that's X Cloud. I I can't I can't get over it enough. How awesome X Cloud has been. Uh, if you're not familiar with xCloud, it is Microsoft's streaming service. It is their new piece where you have your phone tied to an Xbox One controller and you're playing Xbox games that are being streamed to your phone from a Microsoft server somewhere. And I was very skeptical of this system because of Google Stadia, because of my hands-on experience with Google Stadia. And I'm we're, Stadia's out. You can buy Stadia xCloud is in beta form. You have to sign up, wait for them to approve you, and uh, approve you, and then you literally have an, you have to have an Android phone. And that's the only place you can play right now. It's, it's beta. It's it's testing. You're literally getting feedback every time you shut down the app, so that they can gather that and and take that information back and try to improve the system. It's amazing. It works so well. I'm playing games like Forza Horizon Four, Gears of War Five, Ark. On my private servers, I'm having, like, my wife launch the server here at the house. I'm logging in. I'm turning to Ark. I'm boom. I'm in my server. Um, Sea of Thieves. Massive online multiplayer game. No problem. It is so cool. This is clearly showing me what the future holds. And xCloud is really cool. So I'm I'm very thankful for Microsoft giving me the opportunity to try it. Uh, I've been I've been messing around with it almost daily, and I even picked picked up myself a, a nice little. Um, actually, it was cool. Microsoft recommended this. It's just a it's a third party cheap eight dollar uh, clip that clips onto your Xbox One controller and holds your phone. That's not made by Microsoft because they don't have a product available currently. And they said, here here's a link to this product. Man, yeah. Talk about like just hitting it big if you're just that. That random that company, yeah. extra company making aftermarket products or whatever. Yeah. So, um, anyways, it's it's nice. I, I literally I throw my controller in my bag. I already have my phone on me all the time. I sit down, throw the phone in the clip, launch the app. I'm gaming. It's it and and you've seen it now. I've done, I, pl- I played it. I yeah. played it. Uh, hanging out, we were hanging out in the lunch room, and you, you were firing up some games, and you had to go pick up your food that you ordered. Yeah. So I set down the Pokemon I was playing, and I picked up your controller, and I started driving Forza. I was like, "Oh wow, this is crazy!" Because when I was sitting there watching, watching you play, I was like, "It it looks like it's running real smooth. Yeah. It looks very functional. Where yeah. like PlayStation Remote Play is not functional, <laughs> and um." And I was like, "Oh, the the frame rate looks like it's maybe a l- little below thirty. Like it, it does. It's not the smoothest, but you're using the crappy Wi-Fi at work. And then once I was actually playing it, I didn't notice that the frame rate yeah. seemed low. I didn't notice like it. Once you're like actually your eyes are locked on and you're playing, I was like, "Oh, this is a really smooth, really good experience for something that's beta." I was really impressed. Yeah, I would say the that, and that's the thing is that we were. Why I'm so impressed with it is that I was on when I'm at work. I'm on a Wi-Fi network that is just not. I know it's not great. I know it's that's being nice to it. It's being nice to it. It's 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 poor. It's poor <laughs> is, is where I would put it. It's very poor. Yeah. And so for me, I'm sitting here like, okay, well, I think um, I think. This tells this shows me the potential here because when I take when I'm here at home and I mess around with it, it's even better. And so for me, I um I, I'm I'm in love with it. I like it a lot. I'm excited that they're adding more and more games to it to uh, further add value. Um, but anyways, the big thing here for me is it's even it's it's honestly it's easier than a switch. Is kind of what I noticed is that I already carry my phone. 
it's literally a controller, which half the time I carry around a controller with my Switch because I want a full-blown controller. Mm-hmm. So it's it's literally ditching the Switch and just holding the controller and then throwing my phone on it. And I'm like, wow, this could this is probably why back when we were like, why isn't Microsoft worried about a handheld? Why isn't Microsoft worried about you know what, what Nintendo's about to do? And they they already had their answer, and and that's and that's XCloud, and with Azure and all these technologies that Microsoft have, they're set to just to really build an infrastructure that, sure, Amazon could compete with, but there's a reason Sony bought into Microsoft's Azure world to try to set up whatever they're going to release next this next generation, is because Microsoft set up really well for this evolution of gaming, if this truly is the future of gaming, they, they already have one, one, you know, a few steps in the right direction where everybody else is trying to play catch up. I think even, and, and Google has clearly proven that Google, a company that should be able to support a, a situation like this has fumbled it poorly, very, very poorly. So anyways, had a really good time with that. i real quick played i got to play more star wars the game is so good if you have not played star wars jedi fallen order and you can find it on sale this holiday i highly recommend it It is such a fun game um i'm obsessed with fortnite as player one miggy owl zero and we we've we actually been running a lot of squad games we've been um we've been getting wins actually which is which is awesome and we've even been hosted by the hype zone fortnite channel in the last couple of days like multiple times it's been super cool to, to see that our progression in the game has actually been paying off where where we're being picked up by some of these bot channels that are uh, you know throwing hosts around with 50 to 100 people uh, in the stream so really cool stuff had a lot of fun over the holiday sad it's over but hey in a couple of weeks we'll have another break and i'll be able to get you know dive into gaming even heavier i did buy one video game no, on, a, on a black friday on a deal. black friday deal I bought Shenmue 3. Oh, come on! <laughs> I bought Shenmue 3 on the PS4. First of all, I didn't realize it was only on the PS4. I was looking for the Xbox copy. Shenmue 3. Couldn't get it, so I bought it on the PS4, oh. and, and my wife is holding it. You know, If you she, told me you were going to flush $60 down the toilet, I would have come over to watch. $34.99, baby. All right, I'll give you that. $34.99. <laughs> so the thing about it, though, is that my wife looked at me and goes, you're never going to play this, are you? I'm like... Probably not. And she's like, why are we even buying it? I'm like, I don't know. You're the one holding it. And she still bought it for me. So it, it'll go on the shelf. It'll be another one of those sealed games that I don't know if I'll ever even play it. That's the opposite. I was going to go buy that $5 copy of Anthem. <laughs> and my wife's like, yeah, if you want to go to GameStop and get that, you can. I go, yeah, but when am I going to play that? I already own so many games that I'd rather play. And I'm like, what's the Anthem campaign? 20 hours? Uh. 20, 30 hours. Yeah, I was like, maybe, ah. yeah, probably 20 hours. I was like, I don't know when I'll have time to do that. I guess I'll keep my $5 and stay home. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish you would have picked it up because I think you would have just, even even without finishing the story, just having a little bit of time to fly around like Iron Man is always yeah. a, is a good time. And, and it is going to be interesting to see if this does follow the footsteps of No Man's Sky where, where this this anthem 2.0 does really create a resurgence in the game yeah but i mean we'll see we time will tell if that's actually going to happen the difference here is that hello games had nothing else but no man's sky um bioware has many other projects they have to worry about so how much resource are they actually going to put in this game that is right now as far as i'm concerned dead so yeah. but for five bucks i don't know i probably would have done it maybe i'll get it for you for christmas we'll see we'll see anyways Mickey, game of the gaming gaming moments of the week. You got something for us? Game of moment of the week has to uh, it has to be game with you guys. Yeah, uh, it's it's been a good while since I have um like just just said forget you know adulting you know all the all the, all the laundry all the, all the dishes all the stuff and just sit in front of my TV and just game 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 until until something starts to smell weird which i think might be that pizza i couldn't find but it, we're gonna we'll worry about that later but um, a lot of gaming <laughs> but it was a lot of fun i have become addicted to fortnite i never thought that i would be addicted to that game never in my life i'm worried about you i Boo. think I, I, I think i ruined you, you make, ruined make, me. make you say it right you're I, addicted to fortnite mobile I'm addicted to Fortnite. So um, I, I've, I've played on the PlayStation. I cracked open and broken the seal 
on the Xbox. <gasps> I um and I, I I played on the mobile, <gasps> and it it the mobile version is not a dumbed down mobile version. It is it is Fortnite with mobile controls, and I I am amazed at how well that I do on the mobile and on the Xbox. After training with uh, Owl and with uh, Grim, um you know I've gotten better with building on console, and I'm gonna do some training to work at it on uh, on the mobile. But you know I I've been playing it every chance that I get. I put down the controller, I go to bed, and I pick up the phone and I do a couple of matches. I got second place last night, and if I didn't run out of ammo, I would have made first place on solos. And when I clocked out for lunch today, I whipped out my phone at my desk and started playing. Whoa, you went up. You what at your desk? Oh, whoa, whoa. And, <laughs> and, the, and, and the amazing part is Grim jumps into my party. I do. And we're playing at his job and at my at, at my office, which we're like completely far apart. And we're running duos. We were doing really good for not being able to communicate. I mean, just how we were like watching each other and kind of like how we learn how each other d does. Um, it was it was amazing. So I, I, I think I'm going to be hooked on that. And um, yeah, yeah. Broken in, broken in my Xbox and I played some outer started playing some outer worlds after I got off last night. Um, it was a mistake because I wanted to keep going. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. So uh, yeah, got that, and I picked up um, uh, um, Yakuza two, Yakuza Kiwami two, uh, Black Friday. So. There's the weeb. There's the weeb, Miggy. We know. Yep. So I'm looking forward to binge that. I now have zero Kiwami one, two, and I'll be picking up the collections three through five, three through four when it comes out. But yeah, yeah amazing. Um, I will say what he mentioned on the training side is we started playing Zone Wars, which I think you might even like. It's not Fortnite. You literally get dropped in. It's in the creative mode. You get dropped into this coliseum. It looks like an old Ro like Roman coliseum. Mm -hmm. And you spawn into these little like huts. You get random drops, like six random drops. And then you come out of your hut and then it's literally just free for all. And the, the concept is to teach you to shoot and build. So yeah. shoot, build, shoot, build, and really try to work that into your brain um, because it is so different than anything else. Yeah, it's a lot. Of, like it's a lot of fun. I had several people that wanted that. I was like, just let's do this, let's do this. And like, I don't know, I don't think I really want to. This isn't my style. And then by the end of it, they were like, they were like, oh my god, this might be my favorite thing. I might like this more than the regular Fortnite game. Wow. And it's just a creative mode that's actually a user made. Somebody made it in oh, wow. creative mode and then made it public, and so people use it. That's super cool. Yeah. So think of Little Big Planet on the creative mode side, where people build all this fun stuff, and then you can just go get access. So if you even if you don't like Fortnite, you can go do all sorts of weird stuff in the creative mode. What about Deadite? Well, outside of me catching them all, continuing on my quest to become a Pokemon master, gotta catch them all. Which I am. Uh, I'm approaching the end of the main story. So, uh, you know, really taking my time. I'm 45 hours into it. When was the last time I said it was 45, 45 hours? The last hours. game I put that much time into was Jurassic World Evolution. So, but not not over the course of two weeks, three right. weeks, whatever it is. So really going hard on Pokemon. Been loving it. But when I've wanted to take a little bit of break from Pokemon or slow down so I'm not that much further than my wife is in the story, I was recently inspired by being super into the Mandalorian because it's amazing. And, you know, I fired back up Battlefront 2 to finish the story off in that because Battlefront 2 has has some fun story missions. Uh, and it's still, you know, even though it's now a couple years old, it's still a nice looking game. I love some Star Wars. So it was kind of good to, to boot that up and continue the story of Battlefront 2. And I'm sure I just have a couple hours left on that and I'm, I'm done with that. But it's fun playing as Lando, playing as Han flying ships around you know if you're a star wars fan it's just fun it's again it's a game i already own so i was like why don't i try to close this out to actually beat something and finish a game so i can move on to something else so that just kind of my sidetrack from uh all the pokemon raiding yeah and, and i guess my question would be do you think you put 45 hours into this game in, in a short period of time because it's easier because your wife also wants to play absolutely the game. yeah without a doubt um, I'm able to play this game more because, you know, a lot of times, hey, maybe I'll game for an hour, hour and a half here or there. And then my wife gets home and either she'll want to play games together. Maybe it's we're going to, you know, play play some rounds of Mario Kart or we're going to play Mario Party, like the stuff her and I like to play together. And that will be my gaming in the evening. Um, but the fact that, like, 
I'm sitting down and playing, and then she's like, oh, well, I'm also going to play on my Switch because we got my wife a Switch Lite. That has been a big factor in me being able to accumulate a lot of hours in a short time is because Pokemon is something that we do together. You know, she she works on her story. We're both trading and trying to help each other collect and do raid battles together. So that is definitely a big factor in me having extra time to play Pokemon is having my wife support with that. Yeah. So I figured that much. Uh, obviously, both those both of you, that's probably like your favorite franchise. Yeah, for sure. So it, it definitely um, definitely helps. But yeah. Yeah. Um, Cool. Those those are our gaming moments of yeah. the week. We had we had a good holiday break. It was nice. Got some extra gaming in, but unfortunately, it's uh, back to the grind. So um, yeah, that's uh, those are our gaming moments. We want to hear what you were up to. What are you gaming? What's going on? What are you excited for? And you do all of that in the Discord. So join the Discord today. It's free. Talk with gamers from around the world. And you can do so right by going to gamesillomedia.com, clicking on that community tab, and joining the Discord. If you're watching us live on Mixer, the links are always being spammed. Spammed. I mean, like, every second, Miggy is spamming them. People can't even talk. So, anyways, post posting them right up in the chat here live on gamesillomedia on Mixer.com. So, yeah. That's uh, that's what I got for uh, episode 289 of the GameZilla podcast. We are pushing towards that big 300. Oh, man. We're going to have to start planning something. A big uh, celebration. Yeah, big, big celebration. I'm hoping everybody comes out to the live show of 300 because I think we're going we're gonna to try to really build, build that out and do something special there. So I'll be working with Miggy on that one. Nice. Yeah. I'll show up and be confused. Um, yeah, we wanna we wanna make sure that we thank our patrons one more time. You know, the Patreon. If it wasn't for our supporters, we wouldn't be able to do the things we do here. So, if you are looking to find a way to support uh, Gamesville Media and and support us, it's patreoncom media. Not only can you help us out, but you gain perks, you get extra content, you get some exclusives that there's no other way to get other than through Patreon. And then um, Dead Eye here is going to remind everybody about our other amazing podcasts. Yeah, we have uh, some awesome shows with our friends that are hosted GameZillaMedia.com. These are our close personal friends that we work with uh, to help bring you awesome podcasts uh, like The Last Action Podcast, our podcast focusing on action movies. Of course, our, our boys at The Legend of Retro, they cover classic gaming. So they take you down a trip down memory lane. Noobs and Dragons, it's uh, season two. It's a new campaign, new characters uh, learning from Dungeon Master Craig WK. And of course, they are being punished on a weekly basis. Uh, mm-hmm. Many, many critical fails. So uh, make sure you listen to Noobs and Dragons. It's a great story-based uh, podcast with some guys playing D&D. And then uh, a podcast that I am more in love with than ever because I have Disney Plus and I started episode one and I am going all the way through The Simpsons and that's exactly what Noiseland Arcade does. They give you a recap, uh, break down some of the historical things happening the week the episode came out, uh, give you a little uh, inside information about some of the jokes. It is Noiseland Arcade. It is our Simpsons podcast hosted by Sean the Arcade Phantom and Craig WK. All these shows available wherever you listen to the Games of the Podcast and of course uh, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, iTunes, and of course, GameZillaMedia.com. It's a website. I want to remind everybody, GameZillaMedia.com, like you said, is where you can find our YouTube, uh, our stream team, right? We have streamers on Twitch, on Mixer, on on Facebook. So make sure that you're checking out all the content creators that are part of GameZillaMedia, our blog, and of course, all the other shows that, that I just talked about. So thank you, everybody, for hanging out on this episode Please, I'm going to say this live on the show so that people get an idea. Please stick around for a minute. I have I, There's something I want to do at the end of the show, So, um, but we'll do that off recording. Anyways, thank you for hanging out. Remember, we are your Elite Free DLC for all your gaming news. And until next time, game this on. This is the way. Oh, I mean game on. Oh, I have spoken. We, you know, I realized something about me on this podcast I am like if like there's like six degrees of separation. I'm usually only one to two degrees away from talking about fast food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like alarming how quick I'm like. Oh, we're not talking about video. Like we're supposed to be talking about video games, but let me tell you about the Baconator. <laughs> tell you about my Lord and Savior, the Baconator. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like that. I like that.